Nick Chadwick, everyone. Welcome, pal. And he scored quite a lot of goals for a goalkeeper. <laughs> um, big don't score. Hey, you need one more player. Get yourself on some. <laughs> Chairman's lad who was playing, just sit down in the middle of the pitch. He gave you his champagne before the game. Before the game. <laughs> this was before we were going. Oh, well, he's got I was going round Nick and everybody a little laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Physio used to cane me. Why? I used to Thank say, like, you. can I get rub? He's like, no, nah, you're not going to play anyway. So just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, We're back. How you doing, pal? Alright, mate, yeah. You? You're looking well. You should not come in your training gear this week. <laughs> it's bad, that training gear. <laughs> well, it looks bad on you. It's tight. <laughs> hey, I scored it, uh, on Tuesday. I know you did. And uh, after you scored, I got about 10 messages saying, make sure you ask Jordan why he ran off kissing the badge. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't. I you did. did. I didn't even celebrate. You did. My old team, so I just calmed everyone down. Well, Nicky Adams messaged me saying, Jordan were kissing the badge. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> did you? No, there's no chance. You've only been there two minutes. It was like, so one of the lads had played a shit ball through when I was, cle I was on. Yeah. So I was pissed off and I was shouting at him. And all of a sudden it... This ball ricochet just fell at my feet from 2025. Is that the Irish lad? Who? Ricochet. <laughs> so you put so it through shit. to you. So shit. Uh, so I've just took the anger out, hit it, and it's gone in, finally scored. And then you ran off. Absolutely no loyalty, have you? What have you been up to? Uh, I've just come back from Northern Ireland. So they have, it used to be called the Milk Cup. It's called the Super Cup now. The Milk the, Cup? Yeah. Right. Well, there's like, Man United have been going for years, so like, David Beckham and Giggsy and all them have played in it. Um, so this time they were like Man United, Rangers, Celtic, Seville, uh, Brighton, Newcastle, and then obviously all the all the Northern Irish teams. And they have an under sixteens and under eighteens competition, so it's pretty good. So you was looking for players? Yeah, well, just yeah, just looking, just mingling. Any good ones? Uh, yeah, a few good ones. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, I was sat with like some of the like the. The youth development, uh, like talent spotters from England, and it's just good networking to be out there. Yeah, didn't even have a beer. You didn't have one. No. Why? I don't know. I well, I, <laughs> I booked an Airbnb for myself, and I shouldn't have done it. It was, I had, it was like the guy who answered the door. I hope he's not listening, but it looked like hills of eyes. <laughs> I was scared for me. Like, I look, I put a, a chair behind the door. Well, with that risk, he, with that, he were he weren't he weren't from this planet. <laughs> and it, was, it was yeah, and it was out in the sticks. It said a ten minute, ten minute walk to Coleraine, like to where all the football were. It was a fifteen minute taxi, and there were no food, there were no kettle, no TV in my room. The Wi Fi didn't work. It was awful, so I couldn't even entertain myself in my room. <laughs> the Wi Fi kept stopping, so it was just. It was terrible. Just got to use your imagination there, pal. I'm good at that. Your your face kept popping into my mind, so <laughs> just yeah, won't that's work. Ideal. Would not work. Who have we got today then? So we have got. Um, I didn't know until he mentioned it, but it's gonna sound dodgy this, but we we played together when we were younger. Right. Yeah. You didn't get the played contract, with each did you? Other. No, I didn't. I, I think he'll probably tell you that in a minute. Right. Well. But I were. Like one thing that I was impressed with, I were looking through his Wikipedia, obviously doing a bit of research like you do, and he scored quite a lot of goals for a goalkeeper. <laughs> I had a look, to be fair. What's killed him is when he played for Chester, he got knocked out of the league. So all his goals there got wiped off. So that doesn't help him. But... Oh, is that true? Oh, we can come into that. Well, that might, that might, <laughs> yeah. That might uh, and, bring, well, you, to be fair, bring you back a little bit. I'll just start by saying we're not here to talk about how shit I was at Wales. <laughs> <right? laughs> we're here to talk about you, Chaddy, all right? All right. I'd, well, I'm not sure you... whether you want me to speak or not. <laughs> Johnny, in, introduce uh, him. Yeah. Um, well, an ex-pro Prem Championship player and a very good coach. Um, Why have you just come on and lied there? You said, <laughs> That's you as good it. as it's going to get. He's that, that good of a coach. He was too good for me to, to do any good. <laughs> I'm going to sign you. Yeah. Uh, Nick Chadwick, everyone. Welcome, pal. Cheers. I just funny you're going about the, me, uh, the Milk Cup there. I was actually the top goal scorer in the Milk Cup back in the day. Go on. We've, so, we've won. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only other time, by the way. <laughs> was you? But yeah, so when you were saying about uh, Northern Ireland and the 16s and that, we went over when I was at Evan. Ran riot. We had an absolute ball. 
Uh, and we won the Milk Cup and I got the top goal score. And I think the year before me was, um, like you've just said, Giggs, Sheringham, all the top boys had won it. So wow. so it was quite a prestigious thing for the for the kids. Yeah. And I thought it had gone. And you saying you're going back there, it's, uh, yeah. it still is. Well, yeah, it's called the Super Cup now. And on the first day, they have a big parade. Like, yeah, we've done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah had all the parade yeah, going yeah. through Why the streets. Why called the Milk Cup? Because I think it was sponsored by... By milk. <laughs> what, just, seriously, was By cows. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, cows, yeah. No, I don't know. It like it were um yeah, it was it was some kind of sponsorship to do with to do with milk and obviously the youngsters and I don't know. And yeah, it used to be called the milk cup and now it's called the I don't think anyone's milk. ever asked that question before. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the weirdest one ever. Yeah. That's a weird one. So it's a big one though, isn't it, for the youngsters? It's massive, yeah. We was lucky well, I was looking, I don't know whether you looked. Um but you scored like 55 goals in three seasons for Everton's. 48 in 75 appearances. Ah, there you go. Don't, don't, don't question me. Yeah, that's, that, that was, um, when I was younger, I scored a lot of goals. So I always scored. So I went um, I went from Everton, I was from, from Stoke originally, and I went up to Everton and we were like the first batch of kids that went to Everton that were like out of towners. We were the first woolly backs, if you like, to go into, into bikes, Everton. Yeah, yeah. So um, there was three of us from Stoke. There was a few from Ireland, and we come all of a sudden. We started to come into the club, and um, I don't think we would accepted accepted that well back in the day. At the time, we were only like ten, eleven, so we're getting drove up by our parents up the M6. And at the time, you had like Joey Barton, uh, Bradley Orr, uh, Phil Jagielka, I think was there at the time. So there were some good players. But they weren't that receptive to these these kids from Stoke and wherever else. I'm not, really coming really in. Like that I'm not sure. I'm not sure Joey's changed. That's <laughs> it. He doesn't no, like many outsiders. No. I got away with some of the stuff went on then, even when we were kids. And um, so, how old was is he? Lads, same age as you then? Same okay. age. Yeah. Same age. So what 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 was he like as a kid? Just the same. Just the same. I mean, lovable rogue, isn't he? Or yeah. lovable to me, he was lovable because I got I got on with him really well. Some of the lads at the time couldn't couldn't put up to, with the antics. I mean, I remember going to Leeds, and we were like 12, 13 years of age, and we were changing like the, the girls' changing room. And straight away, there was a pink pair of pink pair of trainers in there, and he put it in one of the lads' bags. So when he's pulled his pulled his trainers out, they all start laughing. Now at twelve years of age, it's, yeah. that's hard to take. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if you couldn't handle it, you see people crumbling straight away. Um, but that was that was the scouse humour all over, and I yeah. I bought into it. I liked it, and I did quite well. Because you've got a little bit of a twang now. Now, you? yeah, now. Yeah. But back then, as an 11, 12 year old, I didn't. Yeah. Um, but it was great. I used to go up there Tuesday, Thursdays, bit of training, get in with the lads. Was doing quite well. And um, back down the M6, dad get me a McDonald's or whatever, back down the M6 and then up for a, for a game on a Sunday. So from 11 and 12 up to 16, that was that was me really. That's what we did year in, year out. And you suddenly now you look back and think, my dad taking me up the M6 that, yeah, yeah, after yeah. work, taking me up the M6. You don't even think about it at the time, no, do you? No. It's okay now. But he was loving it because he dropped me at training. Then they'd go and have a couple of pints and watch Monday Night Football or whatever it was yeah. with some of the other dads. And then we'd, we'd come back. So it was just... Um, it was good for me, for me and my dad and our relationship as well, going up the M6 all the time. And and as you said, I was I scored quite a lot of goals, and I was I was always one of the bigger ones. So did um, did you I always did know at that well. age that, that that's what you wanted to do? Like 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 us all, I think that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, I think if you can ask me as a young kid, I go I want to be a footballer. Um, and like everyone, you get laughed off, and you're not going to be able to do it. But they were good at Everton. They made they made they came down. I was fourteen, I think, when I signed my scholarship with the with a with a year's pro. And they came into the school. They presented me with a shirt. They made a bit of a song and dance. Then the people in the school and the teachers and all that started. There was a bit of like clamour even when I was a kid. Yeah. Um. And they made you feel appreciated and special in that way, really. So. But that helped with it the was good. To school then, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've always done all right with that. <laughs> <laughs> I um. When I was younger, I was very good. And Everton... Tried, I've heard this rumour. <laughs> Everton tried to sign me and they wanted me that much. They took me to the ground on a match day, paraded me around the pitch with like my dad and my granddad. I was in with all the players getting signed shirts and it was like, this is, this lad's going to be unbelievable. And then I fucked them off and went to Bolton. And did I, you? I should never have done that. Is that, is that all did Bolton regret? do? What? what did Bolton do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you go there? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Just because it were closer? I think so, yeah. And I, I, I'd i been at Bolton already. Right. But were, they wanted to sign Were Bolton me. as big as Everton back then? Probably not. No, I don't. I don't think I, Bolton have ever been. I don't think my dad could be asked no, going I mean, to like, You know, like higher in the league, I was trying to think, obviously, yeah. like 
were bolted in the Premier League then. Yeah, they was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to think. It, yeah. They were about the same at that, at that time, but obviously you don't know what's going to happen. Got a good academy at Bolton as well. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't last very long, but uh, yeah, that's that's. So what was I chose. was Rooney in your age group? No, he was below me. Um, so in my age group was Sean O'Hanlon. Remember Sean? Um, Peter Clark was a year above. Who's had a good career? Um, George Pilkington had a career. Um, they were in the year above me. Um, but at my age was like Joey Barton, uh, Phil Jagielka, yeah. Bradley Orr, and they, they got rid of everyone. So we had a, we had, I thought we had a brilliant team. And then like 14, 15, um, they made a bit of they made a cull for some reason. They merged two age groups. So only me and Sean O'Hanlon stayed from actually our age group and we went up a year and played with with the year above. What and they got rid of them for and they got and they got rid of them. So I think Bradley Orr went to Newcastle. I think Joey went to Man City. Phil, Phil Jagielka went to Man City and there was others as well. They were good we were good players. Um for whatever reason they did it, I'm not so sure. Um did, do you think they ever look back and think, why did we do that? Or like, is it just you must do. You must do, yeah. Or did they just think right that that was our decision? Yeah. I, I I heard that they always regretted you going to Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Chance. So um, yeah, they probably would, they probably would have done, but we we merged and went up a year, and then we we. Um, we did you know you were one of the better players then, at, at that age group? Did Did you feel like that you were one of the better ones? Uh, yeah, we we had a good side. So even as even as kids, we were winning a lot of games, and we were we were. We were playing well and beating teams, um, and I was playing up front for them. And I was, as I say, I was quite physically developed quite early. So the game was easy for me at the time. You said when you were a good player, George, as a kid, um, the game's easy when you when you're playing well and you, especially as a front player and you're scoring goals. And I always found it, I always found it quite easy at them levels. Um, and I always played up a couple of years. So I played, I was fourteen, fifteen, and came on in the youth cup, which was a big deal at yeah. the time. And um, and I always managed to be. Playing up and above my years, probably because I could physically handle it. Um, yeah, it does help. Told me I was doing it. well. Yeah, it told me I was doing well. Yeah, um, and it was just nat- all my time at Everton was just natural progressions from like fifteens, fourteens to fifteens to sixteens, eighteens, reserves, first team. It just all felt fairly natural. I never thought too much about it. I just went and played and loved it, and that was the way it was really. I suppose it always helps if you're scoring goals as well. You always know that you're going to get a, a, a chance higher up, don't you? And you score goals in, you're going to get, yeah. and eventually you'll yeah. end up in the first and team. Used to might be the same as forward. My my the mindset was really I just wanted to score. So if I score, I'm doing quite well. Um, so I'd go into the reserves. Like a, I was like 16, and I nick a goal or 17. I nick a couple of goals, and all of a sudden you're playing regularly in the reserves because yeah. you keep nicking goals. I went. I remember Walt Smith saying to me at, t- at the time. I went to see Walter Smith as a 17-year-old and ask him why I wasn't playing, which I look back now and <laughs> look back now and think. But I was 17, I was scoring for fun in the in the reserves. And I remember like I think Everton had Steve Watson playing up front, who was a right back, and and somebody else. I don't think they were they weren't really sent forward. Franny Jeffers had gone to Arsenal and they were struggling for forwards. And I was scoring for fun and I was feeling I was like smelling myself a bit. So I was like, I was shitting myself, but I was like, like knocking on. Went to see Walter Smith. And I was like, oh. did, did did anybody tell you to do that, or did you just go do <laughs> it? I'll tell you not back? to do. That. Yeah, some of the fans are listening yeah. outside the ground. <laughs> no, but yeah, there was a, there was a little bit of like, there was a bit of a clamour because I was scoring all the time. Um, so, so, so I did it anyway. Said, go and see uh, some of the fans. Yeah, I think so. Get yourself in there, Nick. Yeah. You should be in the first I was team. All that, yeah, like and like. <laughs> The Echo, uh, the Liverpool, the Liverpool paper, the Echo had like a pink edition at the time, yeah. and uh, I was featuring that quite a bit because I was scoring for the reserves all the time. And I was just a young lad who was like doing well, who was like really ambitious and thought this football looks like easy. Do you know what I mean? I was just like I waltz this Premier League, and <laughs> and, I, and I went to see Walter Smith, and um, and he was good with me. I, I, I half knocked on. I was shit myself really, and I thought he might he might tell me to do one whatever. But yeah. he just said he said you're doing really well. He said, "You're 17 years of age. Um, you're making my life difficult, which is which is what your job. That's what you need to do. You're scoring in the reserves." Um, he said, "You remind me of 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 Ali McCoist in the ty- in the type that you don't always have a good game, but you score." And I thought that was true. <laughs> yeah, was, at times, I thought I'm having a stinker here. Just get just get a goal, and it's yeah. like that'll mask over it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so he was he was right. It, I didn't always play well, but I scored. 
I think that's where Jordan, you're going wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing shit. You're, you're playing shit. I'm not getting We're not allowed to mention failed, are we? You played well and failed, never in scored. A bit, in a bit, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get on to that. No, but that was a good assessment from Walter Smith at the time. And he gave me, he gave me confidence because he could did have he, shot me down. Did he didn't. come and watch the All the time, reserve yeah. games? Yeah. All the time. Well, that's good then. Yeah. You mentioned that me and, me and you played together. Yeah. That, that was, I came to Everton for a while. So at about that time, and um, I was lucky because at 17, I was playing in the reserves with like your Phil Jevons and Daddy Kadamatri. Yeah. And, and at, that, at that time, it was reserves. So we had pros playing. So like, I remember Alec Cleland, who was at Rangers before, played. Scott Gemmell, Mark Pembridge. Um, probably won't like me mentioning it, but they, they played in the reserves quite a lot. Yeah. David Unsworth. So it was good for me. Um, sometimes I play up from like Kevin Campbell or Big Dunk, and I was thinking, how good's this playing with like like fellas who are who are in the Premier League um, and against against opposition as well, so like David May or Stephen Henshaw at Liverpool or yeah. whatever. I was getting all these good experiences, and um, and it was it was really good for me. And then I think you came. We had a couple of trialists coming in as as any club does, and I think I remember you coming. I think we played at Gig Lane, didn't we once? Yeah. Yeah, um, Man United. Yeah, and I remember you coming in because my my mindset at the time was the centre forwards coming in, and I, I that kicked me on because I wanted to prove I was better than whoever was coming in, um, oh, well, uh, which was quite easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we never got a deal, so I must have done all right. <laughs> but I remember you coming in, and I think you scored a couple as well, didn't you? Yeah, I did all right. I thought I did all right, but <laughs> like I mentioned this story before, like once, like when you're training with the first team, I just thought they were at a different level to me. Mm. Like I, I honestly didn't think that. I would be a Premier League yeah. player because I was training, like say, like Kevin Campbell, Phil Jevons, um, Franny Jeffers were there, yeah. and then like yeah, I just felt like they were at a different level to me. I don't know whether yeah. that's because I just come into it and I, I might have finally got there, yeah. but yeah, no, I just felt like they're in a different league. I think I, I had an advantage there because I was just I was just sort of part of that process and bedded in probably slowly. And yeah. it just I said before for me, it just seemed the next inevitable step. As anyone coming in from the outside into that probably probably would have been quite quite daunting for them. I was on. I think I was only twenty as well, and I like I weren't even shaving yet, so yeah. I was quite like physically yeah. like. I think I think I've told this story before, but I, they put me up in the. It's like a Marriott hotel, I think, it, like not far from the training ground. Yeah, I think it was a Marriott. I can't remember anyway. But Duncan Ferguson was in there, and Don Hutchinson. Right. Yeah. So them two were like together. And um, we played we played a reserve game. Them two both played. I don't know why. I think it might have been like coming back from injury. And we've gone back to the hotel. And um, them two straight to the hotel bar. <laughs> and, and they've gone, they've gone, Gareth, Gareth, are you having a beer? And I'm like, no, no, I'm I'm on, I'm on trial. <laughs> I was like, no, no, I'm like, we're in in the morning. Yeah. And Big Dunk's gone, oh, don't fucking worry, big man. All right, he'll, uh-huh. I'll get you with me. Like, we'll go jacuzzi, go gym. You'll, uh-huh. you'll do nothing. So I was like, oh, go on, they'll have a beer. <laughs> so I went and sat next to him. And obviously you've got Big Dunk, Don Hutchinson, and them guys can drink. I'm sure this guy was going to say it wasn't going to be a, my, it wasn't going to be a short one. My God. I, rem- I remember, well, I can't remember getting to bed. I remember one of them putting me in my bed. <laughs> and he said, like, I'll get you up in the morning. Don't worry. Knock on the door about, half seven in the morning, <clears throat> there's a, like we had a driver. So the driver come and the roughest I've ever been. I'm being sick in the shower. <laughs> like, I was like, shit, I've, I've fucking blown it here. Anyway, all the way on the, on the way to training ground, big don't, don't worry, big man. Hey, get with me, get with me. You'll be fine. So we, we, we've it's gone in. <laughs> it's a bad Scottish yeah, accent. Did he become Irish? I'm trying my best. <laughs> anyway, we've got into training. We've got changed, got our kit on. I've got my towel around my neck. I'm walking out with my flip flops, walking with Dunk. He's off to like the, I can't remember, Devere gym or whatever. I'm thinking, I'm going with him. I'm going to sit in Jacuzzi. Walter Smith sh- shouts over, talking to Big Dunk, and Big Dunk's going, Hey, you need one more player. Get yourself on some. <laughs> <laughs> and he literally yeah. pushed me over, and I was like, You bastard. Uh, yeah. And even Don Hutchinson were walking off, <laughs> laughing their heads off. And we went, well, me, I went and joined with the first team just doing doggies and five a side. Oh. And it was the, I was horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, back talking in, about not getting a back deal. In the day, back the in the day, then, you weren't your stripes through stuff like that. I think, it, you know, like, yeah. like, I remember we went on, we went a couple of end of season trips. And you weren't your stripes, obviously you had to perform well in training and, and training the games, but 
the fact that they seen you were a good lad, then they'd want to they'd want to help you more. Yeah, I think yeah. it was more like that back then, wasn't it? Than, yeah, than possibly. Well, yeah, like I, I kind of thought if I didn't sit with them and have a drink, yeah. like they wouldn't have my back and yeah. they wouldn't, you yeah. know, like they wouldn't want me to to do well. Like yeah. I have to have ten pints. Oh, right, I don't even like, think I had that. Could have had a couple <laughs> and said, right, lads, I've got a train tomorrow. I think, I think there's been many a young lad who's been seen off on son, uh, something <laughs> like that. Yeah. There? But that was like they were the characters back then, though, weren't it? And yeah. they could, like, say, like they got up fresh as a day as he went and yeah. did whatever, and they were brilliant. He was brilliant. Duncan to me when I was a young player around that time was. I remember I was in the squad for one of the first times, and I come to uh, I come to park on the players' car park, and I'm thinking I'm, I've arrived here. Like this is this is a bit more like it in your own car. Yeah, what car was you? Yeah, yeah. What, you uh, what was the driver that sounded like a comp, little compact BM? Remember the little cut off yeah, compact? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I bounced into Goodison with my suit on. I've thought I've arrived. Like, went to get into the car park, and the steward's gone. Uh, it's full, mate. And I'm like, uh, I didn't want to say, but I'm like, I've got my suit on. Mate. He went, no, it's car park's full. You'll have to go and park. There's a school down the down the road. You're gonna have to park. <laughs> Did there. he not recognise your rent? Did, oh, no, he went on to me at all. So <laughs> yeah. I've had to drive. I've had to pay a fiver to park my car. And I've had to bounce into the change room. And I'm going, I couldn't even get on the fucking car park. <laughs> <laughs> and Dunk's gone up. He was like, club captain. He said, I'll sort that. And uh, to be fair, he sorted it. And yeah. then then he spent the next six months saying, I remember when you couldn't even get on the car park. <laughs> one. You was quite um, highly rated at Everton though, weren't you? So I'll I'll... say you made your debut at 18. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, would, I, would, I did really well. I mean, when I was when I was at Everton coming through, and I just was like so confident, and um, a lot of the coaching staff were brilliant. Colin Harvey, who was my my youth team coach, he was he was really hard on me, um, but he was but he just he worked me to the bone. So I was fit, I was strong, I was confident. Uh, Andy Holden went from the youth team to the reserve team. Taff, who who loved the bones of me, so I knew I had someone who who had me back there in terms yeah. of on the staff, um, and I could just play with with freedom and not even think about the game and just try, as I say, try and score and try and do well. And I always managed to score. And even when I, when I broke through, when David Moyes came, I think he made a big play on giving some of the young lads a chance. Um, so so it was it was him who, who gave you yeah, the debut? I, I came on, I came on under Walter Smith in the, um, the EFL trophy yeah. or whatever it may be. And uh, we played Crystal Palace that night. And, right, um, yeah. and I came on and it was a draw. And uh, we had to get on the huddle at the pitch at the end, and he's got his penalty, like penalties, like who wants one? So I'm shitting myself. I didn't want one, like so. Um, but I'm saying I did because I thought yeah. I had a chance to score. Have, yeah, I've yeah. got to go, like. Yeah. And you have to say it, like yeah. me as well, don't you? So they've gone like four players, and it's only, it was only like it was Crystal Palace. I think they were in the championship at the time, and it was, um, and it was like they had four takers anyway, but they didn't have a fifth. So. I'm like half putting my hand up, but I, I was thinking, oh, my arse was gone. Like, So I think they put someone as fifth penalty taker anyway. And then they went, first sudden death will be you, Chad. So I was like, great. Sound. Yeah, <laughs> until it come to it. And then, yeah. so they were losing 5-4. I think du Dougie Freeman stepped up for Palace. And if he scored, they went through. And if he missed, I was on first sudden death. And I was like 17 and I was thinking, I fucking hope he scores. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, but I was like, my arse was gone. Like, yeah. And uh, he scored. Ah, oh, so and he never got he to scored, take it. So I didn't take it, and he scored, and then it kicked off in the changes after as well between some of the staff and some of the players. So I went through this like made up. I've got on. Oh no, I'm going to take a penalty. Sudden death. To now, there's a big kickoff going on in the dressing room. So it was like it was a crazy, Shit. crazy oh, yeah. night. Like, the first that was my first experience under Walter Smith, and then mainly it was under David Moyes. After do you, do you not feel that is? Football to a T though. It's such up and yeah. down so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Like you're there, like what? Well, well you'd be 18, were you? So I think it was seven, that night, I think it was 17, 18, around that time. Yeah. yeah. I just turned 18, maybe. Yeah. Um, but you, it's mad like you work, and I relate this to some of the young lads I've worked with recently. You, you're working all your life to get that opportunity. And then when you get on, it's like, oh, now, now I've got to deliver. You yeah. know what I mean? And it yeah, took me, yeah. suddenly that first game, I was thinking, because I just took a penalty. I wasn't the greatest penalty taker ever. I missed, I missed a few for the reserves, to be fair. Um, but there was an opportunity for me to go and score straight away and make an impact. But I was half like, yeah. I was half myself. Do you, um, do you look back now and wish you'd have put your hand up for that fifth one? 
I, I think I, I think I did at the time, and rightly so. I don't think they wanted to put me right, under okay, that pressure. Okay, I think enough. they wanted to protect yeah. me a little bit. Not uh, fifth penalty as well. Yeah, <laughs> just come on fresh. Yeah. Could always yeah, get, well, you could always work in your advantage. Yeah. Though, what, I, what I learned from that is what I took into the next few games was if I get an opportunity again, I just want to score. Yeah, and and, and as I say, David Moyes came and. and I'll always be grateful to him because he gave me an opportunity straight away. What well, What was he like as a manager? He was tough. I mean, because uh, he, he did really well for yeah. Everton, didn't he? And then obviously, then he moved on to yeah, he did United, brilliant. He? he did brilliant, and I and I look look at him now. I think he was like, I think he was still in his thirties when he took over. Yeah, Everton. He was yeah. So he was younger than what I am now. And I think to what was good about that, him. Well, to walk in that dressing room, you had like Gascoigne, Ginola, Duncan Ferguson. You had some some big hitters in that dressing room at the time, and I remember his first meeting. And I remember him being really stern and really firm, and 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 looking back now, I think fair play. And I remember him saying like, "Mess me around once, you might, I might give you a second chance, but the second time, you just say gas the balls off." Yeah, he was there. <laughs> yeah, okay. and I'm thinking he's just addressed all these big hitters. And just set the tone straight away, and his yeah, authority right. was there was yeah. there from day one. What was Gaza like then? Yeah, he was just as you would expect. He was like. A brilliant footballer, brilliant to me, as brilliant to all of us as young lads. I think all the all them big characters were brilliant to us young players coming through. They didn't half help us, and he was one. And then he'd done some mad stuff. Like remember the mop with Ginola when Ginola signed, he ran out with the mop on his head. As if that was <laughs> so he had long hair. <laughs> yeah, Zab- yeah. Zab- Xavier was doing the interview, and he lashed the big bucket of water on him from above in the kitchens, and it was just non-stop. Was, right? yeah. yeah, non-stop, yeah. non-stop, but. Obviously, he had he had the issues as well. And, yeah. and uh, what was his talent like in in training? Like, was, was was he exceptional yeah, in flying. training? Yeah, yeah, he'd lost a yard, but you could see. I remember watching him in nineteen ninety in yeah. the World Cup, and when he when he drove past people and his arms come out and moved them out of the way, he still had that. And it was like to see that up close, and he, he was still the same Paul Gasco, and he was just not as strong and not as fit. Yeah. And, um, didn't have the same probably legs as what he'd had years before. But for me, it was like a lot of the days at that time were like, I'm 17, 18. Here's Paul Gascoigne. Wow. I'm talking to him or I'm training with him. Like yeah. In the Reggie games, he'd be, the, the advice would be coming whilst he was playing. He wanted be to, talking he to, wanted to help us and the opposition, to be fair. He helped the opposition. What are they? What is it like? What to do? Yeah, yeah. He'd like, he'd, he'd like, Don't be giving get, that ball get away pa- there. Get past me now, son. You know, like to the oh, opposition. Really? And he'd, he'd, yeah. See, that's class, isn't it? Yeah. I think he ran off once. I think he needed it. I think he needed a shit once and he just ran off. And everyone was like, where's he gone? Just and ran come back on. I'm so sorry, lads. I just needed to go. <laughs> one, of, one of the best stories that I've heard from him, and he was he was shooting practice with Gary Lineker. Have you heard this one? Mm. So they used to do like shooting after every training session <clears throat> and there was like a goal, then there was a fence, then there was like a bit of a field behind. And... Him and Gary Lineker were having like a competition. And I think Gary Lineker was something like four goals ahead of him. And he like obviously it, it was for a bet. Gaz has laid one in, fired off to the side, he's hit it, over at bar, over at fence, into the field. So Gaz is like, fuck's sake, ran, jumped over at fence. Like Gary Lineker tells his story. He said, that was it, it was gone. Like nobody he saw him. Back for three days. No, he come back exactly 24 hours later when they were doing shooting practice again, he hadn't been in training all day, uh, jumped back over the fence with ball under his arm and went, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> and when he found out, he'd be like, he just left, jumped in his car, uh, went on the lash for 24 hours, missed training and just come back. But the genius to come back at like, the exact <laughs> same time yeah. with a ball thought, under yeah, his yeah, arm. Thought through, it? You yeah. can't really get a ball. Imagine that at KP. <laughs> <laughs> He's just jumping all Would have been all day. <laughs> I love that. I love that story. Had like, um, <clears throat> so we had like, like Archie Knox and Walt Smith loved him like they absolutely loved yeah. him. Yeah. So we had like we had a table well, Walt tennis. Walt Smith had him at Rangers. Yeah. There. Yeah. So we had a, we had a table tennis on the indoor, and he was mustered at table tennis. So we'd be playing table tennis all the time. But he just he, he used to smoke as well. So he'd be like, I need a tab, I need a tab. And then so he'd just be playing <laughs> table tennis, smoking like <laughs> fuck. And you'd be thinking, mad this. And he had like a um, he had a thing where he got into tuna. <laughs> so like I'd go to the canteen, and he'd just be eating tuna out the tin. And then you just get another tin and another tin, and you just go mad on the tins yeah. of tuna. That was his. Was that like, was his weight loss days, though, weren't it? Yeah. Sit ups with another one. He had another one about like he wanted to get into shape. So we just like you'd walk past the gym, and it was guaranteed he'd be doing sit ups. It was just like <laughs> he wouldn't just do like hundred, and that'd be it. It yeah. would be like all day. 
<laughs> I'm supposed to be in bed. So after your debut and how did it go from there? Like, was you did you settle in all right? And yeah. So I came on a couple of times and and um, and it and it went quite well. I thought I did all right. Um, and then I came on at Goodison against Bolton, um, and I think we were two one up, and Bolton had a corner and we cleared it, and then Thomas Radzinski was quick. He latched onto it, and the keeper was come hurling out right on the like on the throwing throwing line, and the keeper's come hurling out, and Radzinski, oh, so the centre half's gone hurling across. Sorry, and Radzinski skipped past him, so it was like I'm in the middle. I'm like getting forward, yeah. thinking I got a chance here, and uh, if Radzinski squares it, I'm in on goal with the keeper to beat, and he did. And as the ball's coming across, it was like the it was like slow motion yeah. satisfied. <laughs> yeah. So the ball's coming across. I'm on the edge of the box, and for some reason, I love. I watch it now and think, why didn't I take a touch? For some reason, I thought I'll finish this one touch. Um, and I did. I made a good connection, and I beat the keeper and I scored. And then it just went like that. Was like for me, that was like the moment where, from like I said before, from twelve to I it was eighteen then. You're working for that moment, and that was probably yeah, that was probably the best ball. moment. You know Some what I mean? ground Gunnison as well. Yeah, to story. front of the Gladys Street. Yeah. I'm giving it the big licks, like look at me name and all that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and all the lads come over, which was nice because the lads were made up for me because they must have seen it was a big achievement, yeah. a big moment for a young player. So, um, so go on, name 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 some of them players in that team then. So you say uh, yeah, Gaza, yeah, Ginola. I don't think they, don't, they were in the team. Radzinski was up front. Yeah, I think Steve Watson was in the team. Alan yeah. Stubbs, Davy Weir, uh, David Unsworth. Um, who would have been in the middle of the pitch probably Mark Pembridge Lee Carsley maybe yeah, yeah. Scott Gemmell was around that time a couple of non-league managers in there as well yeah yeah, in there. yeah yeah uh, who else played but there was some real good it was, I would say there was good men around at that yeah. time who who, were, who helped um, did you have family in the crowd players. yeah so it was nice that was the best thing for me I went and scored two or three more straight away at Goodison so yeah. I scored, came on and scored against Leicester and then I scored. I started against Blackburn. I think it was a Super Sunday game. I scored again. Then, so like my nan and granddad had come to that game, and like like my dad had come to every game. So he was at, he was at the first one. But like, like you paid your dad that was there, that was better. Yeah, that was better for me. The fact that the, my family. I remember Taff like was Taff was like six foot seven, centre half, was like big and ugly centre half. Had a great career. But been my youth team coach, and resi manager. He's in tears when I scored my first goal. After oh, the game. was it? Me and him were almost in tears. It was like <laughs> such a moment, like yeah. Um, and then, like say, like my nan and granddad were in the crowd. My sister would come and all that. So I, I was more, almost more pleased once I scored my first goal. It, I was a little bit more like, this is just how it's going to go now. I'm just going to keep coming on, score, get in the team, and then that's the way it's going to be. Um, so I, I quickly got got involved in it and got like used to my surroundings and being with them sorts of players and being in that environment. Um, but it was nice. It, looking back, it was lovely for my, my family, especially my dad who'd been to every every game I'd ever played to be able oh, to amazing experience moment, that moment. That? Yeah. Can you remember who was, who was in the Blackburn side? Was Shearer? <clears throat> I think it was yeah. York and Cole were up front. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's class. Yeah. Um, who else? I think, was it Lorenzo Amoruso might have been in the side that yeah. day. Um, Shit, Goldberg's all that. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure, to be fair. I'm not too sure. I think Ian Walker was in goal at Leicester when I scored. I remember that. Right. Um, oh, yeah. Robbie Savage played in the Leicester side. I was, I was trying to think who'd be the Blackburn keeper. Uh, Brad, was Brad Friedel? Flowers? Maybe. Yeah, maybe after Maybe after Flowers. Did Brad Friedel play for Blackburn? Yeah, Brad Friedel. Friedel. Brad Friedel. Yeah. I think it was Brad Friedel. I think it was. Class. Um, you obviously play. So after that then, like like I say, like you, you scored three quick goals and then it... Stuttered a little bit. Yeah. And why? Like any reason behind that? Can like how did that make at, you feel? I was just at su- I was at such a big club, <clears throat> and um, I think probably in, in David Moyes' eyes, I think he wanted that young, fresh, energetic impetus, and we stayed up that season. Um, but I, I don't think it was probably ever his long term plan to play me up front as Everton's number nine, and I, I didn't think that was going to be the case either. Um, I was just happy to be to be doing as well as I could. Yeah. Um, how many years below was? Rooney. So Rooney was two years, but Wayne was two years below. So um, he just started to. Yeah. yeah. So the next, the, the next season, I think I had a hurt. Think that affected you. I, I think it would. I think it did. Yeah. I mean, there was always the conveyor belt. You know, like Kadamatri, Je- Jeffers, Kadamatri, Phil Jevons, uh, myself. Then you had Wayne. Then you had yeah. James Vaughan. Then you had Victor Anachibi. So a club like Everton, you're always getting the next one. And I think, yeah. I think you've got to take your chance. And if you don't, 
you move on because the next one's going to be there. And that was that was the case. I think the season after I broke through, um, I needed a hernia up quite early, quite early on in the season. Um, and I sort of missed that pre-season tight. Uh, I always thought pre-season, I always looked at it. And I say it again, so I say to the young, the young lads now, I think young players get an opportunity at, young, at the pre, pre-season or the end of the season. Now, I'd yeah. got my chance at the end of one season. And I wanted to make sure I made the most of it the pre-season after. And I think I did. I think I scored a few goals and I was right in run amongst it. Um, and for whatever reason, I think I got a hernia injury or, or was out. For some reason, I was, wasn't was playing as well. I can't quite remember. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, Wayne was in and around, in and around things. Um, and you look back now and think, no one was going to be able to stop no. Wayne. Do you know what I mean? Coming was, through now. It was a phenomenon. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, so Wayne broke through, and then they were never going to be able to play a young lad alongside another young lad up up front. And and to be honest, I probably wasn't good enough either. That's that's the crux of it, and certainly nowhere near Wayne's ability. Um, so Wayne broke through, and and then I started to struggle with I had the odd hin- um, hernia injury. I went out on loan to Derby and didn't score. Yeah. Um, and I, I had some other times when I came when I came on and I and I scored and I still was managed to get involved. Um. But it was always a little bit stop start for me then, um, and I got to the stage and I got a little bit <clears throat> frustrated with like four years in the resies, and I was like by my fourth year, it wasn't yeah, quite the that, same as it was when I was seventeen. You want out, don't you? Yeah, you know, by then. Like, yeah, and I was thinking and it changed to like a bit tappy tappy <clears throat> like it is now as well. Or? Uh, not so much, no. And and like looking back now, I should have just stayed because I was like I was right in the mix still. I was training with the first team every day, yeah. getting opportunities. I think like the week or two weeks before I eventually left, I got on. I got on against Sunderland in the Premier League, right? And I was still only like twenty twenty one, so oh. like why what, what, there wasn't yeah. this this rush to actually for it to happen? I think, but because I'd because I'd played quite young, because Rooney would have left maybe not. not <clears throat> yeah, I think he was on to Man United not was, long after that. One, yeah, right? I think he was still there. Uh, when I left, I think, um, but like Leon Osman had broke through, who, yeah. who I was good mates with. Tony Abbott had broke through and Tony stayed Abbott, there, yeah. who, 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 I was, who I was good mates with. So um, Peter Clark had sort of broken in, was a bit like me, really. I think he eventually went to Blackpool. Um, so it was that it was that time for me. I mean, I was at contract, and David Moyes said to me, "I'll give you another year. There's no rush for you to leave." Um, but I've been out on loan to Millwall and done quite well. And there was, there was a deal there for me, for me to go to Millwall, which. Which, if it had got done, I think would have been the right move for me, but um, it didn't quite go through. And after that, I, th- I was then getting the the urge to to go and prove myself, I suppose. Because when you was at Millwall, you ended up like having a really good FA Cup run. You end up <coughs> getting yeah. to the final, but like I, it's a strange one because you like didn't Everton recall you? Yeah, really yeah, it was, yeah. Three days before, before the final. Yeah. No, so so uh, so I was there before the Christmas period. And again, I had, to, I had to go back to have the, my other side of the hernia done, so I had the other side done. So I went back to Everton, and I'd done quite well. And um, and I think I think Millwall offered about five hundred grand at the time, and um, I was I was wanted to do it. I loved like Dennis Wise was the manager, Ray Wilkins was the assistant, and they had a good side. We were about eleventh, yeah. tenth in the championship. I loved the den; it was like brilliant. Yeah. Um, was he as fiery as what he's seen? Yeah. <laughs> Dennis Wise? Yeah. Was he? Yeah. We had like Jack Ke- Russell. Like he Ke- must be totally different to David Moyes at Ever- <laughs> and then you've got Dennis Wise. Yeah, a little bit. But they both had that fire. Yeah. So, and like, um, but Kevin Muscat played in the side and he was like... Muscat. Oh, adorable. <laughs> Is that, who says who says that? What's that? What manager says something about Muscat? Yeah, most who? of them. Neil Warnock, yeah. Warnett, yeah. He ate him. That's yeah, a Muscat, that. Yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> you know, seen the that's clip. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. That's a fucking Muscat. That's what, <laughs> that's what he was like. He was naughty, like. But that was, was like, it? yeah, there was a scrap in the tunnel every other week. But it was like, it was to me, it was proper. I'd gone like four years playing the Resis, and all of a sudden, it was three points. It was like, I was in around football. it in the champ- the thick of it in the championship. Yeah. And I went back to Everton anyway, and I'd me, had me hernia done. And, um, and I wanted to go back to Millwall. But, but, um, David Moyes wanted me to go to Coventry, I think it was, on loan or somewhere else on loan. But I was like, I was determined, if you like. I was a bit stubborn, I want, and I was thinking Millwall's the right place for me. And again, looking back, David Moyes might might have been right. Who knows? I perhaps should have, should have maybe gone on loan elsewhere. But I hung on and hung on and, and went back to Millwall on loan. And it was, the, it was the week of the semi-final when I went back at Old Trafford and we played uh, Sunderland. 
And Wisey said to me, he said, oh, uh, you, you'll, you'll be sub. I'm going to play the team that got us through the quarters. You'll be sub, but I want to get you on. And I was like, oh, brilliant. And again, family are all up at Old Trafford. And it was like, the atmosphere was amazing. And we had a we had a, two injuries in the first half. And then we were winning, Tim Cale scored. And we were winning, so we bought he bought a defender on it. Oh, no. like, towards the second half. I was like, what happened to me getting on in the FA, the <laughs> FA Cup semi-final? But it was just the way the game, the game panned out. So it was an unbelievable experience to be in this, the FA Cup semi-final. We got to the final. And then... Um, and then, like, like I said, I was, um, I, I couldn't, oh yeah, got, I played all season and uh, Dan Dickio, Danny Dickio got sent off at Forest like a few weeks before. I think Neil Harris was injured. So I was thinking, I'm definitely playing in the final. Um, but the issue was, my loan expired. You can only do a certain amount of days on loan at a oh, club. Because, yeah, because the cup final goes yeah. past that date. Yeah. So, last so it was like... So it was like appeal to the FA, get an extension on the deadline because it's the FA Cup final. But they couldn't. I had to go back. So I went back like and a week it, before. And, and you would have played, do you reckon? Well, they had no, they had no centre forwards. I think, I think Neil Harris ended up playing. Um, Dan Dickio definitely didn't. So I had to go back. Oh, so I, so I couldn't play. But how did they go on? We lost. We lost. Yeah, we lost. But Mill, Mill were good to me. They, um, they invited. You mentioned me. Cahill. Like he was yeah, top notch yeah. then, weren't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Millwall, yeah. Was really brilliant good. player, brilliant, brilliant lad, and um, but Millwall invited me back for the final, so I had the, the cup final suit and went down. It was at the Millennium, so went down a couple of days earlier. And um, was you alright getting in the car park? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just about. Um, but it, it was good. Like I, so I was with like the injured and suspended boys, so we were like out two nights before the final. We were out the night before the final, so come the cup final, we were sat on the bench like, I was, like <laughs> about that. six hours right sleep. Ass, <laughs> but uh, Dennis White, did, he gave a great speech before the final, and, and he had a little like a little half a glass of champagne, and he made a toast to everyone, and like if you wanted to drink it, you drank it. If you wanted to chuck it over your shoulder, you did. Uh, but that was the I thought it was quite nice with it being. Can you like, remember like anything that he said? I think it was just around like. No one expected us to get here. What an achievement it is to be here. You're playing Man United in the FA Cup final. Like yeah. you've, you've won already, but go out. Let's give it our give it our best, and you never know what might happen. But he gave you yeah. champagne before the before game. the game. <laughs> this was before we got. No, when he's got. Beer. I was going round nicking everybody's little laugh. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't play. Air of the dog. But uh, in typical Wisey fashion, I remember going out in the first couple of minutes. I think he smashed into Ronaldo or someone like that, and that was a little message to to our t- to our team more so than. More so than Man United, it was a case yeah. of come on, we're here to win. Let's just have a let's just have a go, yeah. and that was that was the mentality of that Millwall side. It was like let's have a tear up, let's have a go, and see where it takes us. Um, and obviously, you know, I think Ronaldo scored two on the day, and I think Skull scored, right? Maybe, um, and we lost. I think it was three, three, one, three nil. Um, <sighs> Ronaldo, what could have been though? Not- yeah, it was great yeah. memories. We look back to like that, that, even that team, that team that played. It wasn't full of big hitters. There wasn't. I mean, Tim, Tim, Tim Cale obviously went off to Everton and did really well. Yeah. Um, but like a lot of the team were just like good, solid lads who yeah. stuck together, who were talented, were a talented bunch, um, and managed to get to the FA Cup final. That was a good, good team memories. spirit as well. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Right, once again, big thank you to uh, Sky Fantasy Football for sponsoring the pod. Not far off now, are we, Jordan? Oh, not long to go. Uh, who's going to win it? What, the Premier League? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're only a week off now. I don't think you can look past Man City. No, too good out there. Yeah, too good. So if you want to come and challenge us, obviously there's going to be a cash prize and then we can double or quit sit for uh, the round of golf against me and Jordan. The pin is on the screen on the socials, get yourself a name, get yourself a team, come and challenge us. Have we still got Mitch for it? Is it front? No, we've not. I think he's, about as, he's about as useful as you. <laughs> we've not, we've swapped him out. We've swapped him out. We, I, I don't think anyone will beat us. No. Come on the Corey Stash. So the season after, the, is that when you went to Plymouth? So then, yeah, I came back, I came back from Millwall. I had already been to Derby on loan, which didn't go so well. Um, then I went to Millwall on loan, it went all right. And then um I just had that itch then to get out and play. Yeah. And look back now, I shouldn't have. I should have just I should I was loving it. I, I love Everton, love the club, love my time there, loved the players, the coaches all like me. I was well thought of, as you've said. I was doing all right. I was still in around it. Um, but I just had this itch to go and like 
in my mind, I was going to go to the championship, score a score a load of goals as I'd always yeah, done, and then I'd be back to the prem. It was yeah. just going to be dead easy, like. And I had no idea. I had no idea <laughs> the game. I thought I did, but I had no idea. And uh, in the end, we we played Plymouth in the FA Cup, and I came on when I was at Everton, and uh, I came on and scored, and. Um, I didn't know at the time, but I think a deal had been done. It was a Saturday night, it was on the BBC, the cup game. And on the Friday night, I think they'd, they'd already done the deal or a deal had been discussed. And you'd not been told I, about it? I didn't it. know, no. So I, I, I think we've talked about this before. But like, I don't take this wrong way, but back in the olden days, <laughs> <laughs> like clubs used to agree a fee and a player would just get told, right, okay, we'll sold you to yeah. whoever. And, and that was it, really, yeah. the decision yeah. made. Well, I remember getting told... Um, because Plymouth's a long way David from Everton. We accepted a bid from Plymouth. And I, at the end of the season, I had an agent who was telling me, you've got like all these championship clubs, nearly every championship club lined up. But in my mind, I was like, I've only got a few months, a few months left. Then I've got no no contract. So again, I'd never been in that position before. <clears throat> so, but David Moyes had said, look, well, don't worry about that. We'll, we will offer you another year. Yeah. Um, which now I would have, I would have took. But back then I was like, well, I'll see what happens. And um, and I went down to Plymouth and a lot of the senior pros and a lot of the staff were going, don't go down to Plymouth. Like, <laughs> they'd only just gone to the championship. Like, it's miles away. Like, what, Is it a six-hour drive? That? Yeah, yeah. It, they were like, what, you do? what are you doing? Yeah. Down there, yeah. 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 But, but I went down there and the, the chief exec... At the time at Plymouth had been club secretary at Everton, Michael Gunford. So I thought I'll I'll pay them the respect that's that they're due. I'll go down there and meet them. And then again in hindsight, once I'd gone down there, I was I was gonna sign. And I and I looked around the hoe and Plymouth's a beautiful area. I, I loved yeah. I loved my time there and I loved the area. Um and as soon as I got down there then and I met Michael Dunford and he told me their plans and they've just got to the championship and it was an exciting time to be part of the club. And I thought this this all this is Did this is where you're I in. want to be. They offered me four yeah. four and four years as well, which all of a sudden I thought I've gone from having a couple of months left on my deal to four and a half years. Yeah, where do so, I sign? Yeah, and they, so, and they paid a decent fee for you, two hundred fifty thousand, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. So at the time, Wrong. I think that was there. I mean, back in the day, yeah, back in the day, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, forty years ago. <laughs> Good fee. Oh, so yeah, I, I, but I went down to see them and then I come home. So that was six hours down all day there, six hours back, and then. Decided to go, so six, six <laughs> hours back down the next day. No six way. hours back down there, and um, yeah, I think it was a resi game on at the night, and I signed with Bobby Williamson was the manager who was a Scot, so um, and I signed uh, I signed that night, and him and my agent went out for a for a curry and a few beers on the barbican. I think <laughs> I was thinking, what's going on here? I got training tomorrow, a bit like your still your tale before. Yeah, go out with him? No, no, I was no, uh, no I stayed on the uh, coke and the water. Good lad. How did it? How did that pan out for you, Plymouth? It was difficult. I, I, I mean, I um, difficult because you was in in a a losing side. Uh, well, I, I, it was diff. I experienced quite a few firsts in when I went to Plymouth. So I, for the first time, I experienced not 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 scoring regular, and I didn't really handle that very well. And then because I'd gone there, it was quite a big signing, and I was from Everton. I think there was the, the immediate. Pressure, pressure really of that which I, I hadn't I obviously hadn't experienced was before. you on your own as well you I just... was on I was on my own but the lads were brilliant that was the, the best thing was the, and how old were you 21 like 21 22 yeah and Plymouth at the time had a group of lads all that age so it was like it was in terms of the lads and me settling in it was I was okay um, but we, we were playing some good side they'd just come up from league one and we were playing like I think the second game was West Ham away and like they had like Sheddingham playing and Anton Ferdinand and like uh, Mark Noble and all these like big hitters for West Ham. And we're Plymouth and like we we, we held our own. We were like Wolves, Sheffield United, West Ham, all these big massive clubs. And I think we were 17th in the league. So inevitably you weren't getting the same chances. And, yeah. I, and I was the type of player who <clears throat> was never going to create my own chances. I didn't pick up the ball and go past a couple and, and score. I, I was getting on the end of things or or I was getting slid, slid through to score. So um, I just went, I went games without scoring. And I, mem I remember after, I think I'd only played six games and um, <clears throat> Dexter Blackstock signed at the same time. And um, I remember Bob Williamson pulling me in and saying, I'm not, not going to play you today. And uh, I think we're playing Brighton. 
and he had like he had the curly finger, you know, you know, before the game, so I had to do the walk of shame into, knew, the, yeah. into the physio. The worst, that, isn't it? Yeah, we've Still all, alert. We've oh, all experienced ah, it. Well, like. So um, I went and he went, I'm not going to play you. And I, but, I, but I was like still full of it and determined to do well. And I thought, I'm here to, to score. And, and Did you think you've been playing well? Or? I thought I'd been doing all right. Yeah, all we'd right. had a tough run of fixtures as well from what yeah. I remember. And, we'd, and we'd, we'd had an half decent run. It wasn't like we'd been beat every week. So I argued my case. I said, what you know? I was like, I was like, I've played quite well. You've just signed me. It's only my sixth game and I haven't scored, but we're, do, we're doing quite well. And he went, he went, I've changed my mind. You're back in. <laughs> and yeah. I went, I went, no. I said, I said, don't tell me I'm not playing and then change. He went, no, no, you're back in. So straight then I was like, you can imagine it, can't you? I'm walking back into the dressing room. All the lads are thinking I've yeah. been I've been, been dropped. dropped. Yeah, but then I've been yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you argue with him, you'll get back in. Yeah. And um, and I scored. I scored like 15 minutes in. I scored. And then I remember him saying to me, we were in the next day because we played on the Tuesday night. And I remember him saying to me, um, I worked like my psychology worked. Oh, I, so I, was, I was thinking, no. <laughs> Let me do that. Yeah, I, love how they, yeah, I love how they do that. Yeah. that. It's all down to me, that goal. Yeah, <laughs> and I thought, no, it wasn't that. I knew something needed to happen. Yeah. And then I never scored on the, I think it was the Tuesday night I didn't score. And on the Saturday, we were playing away. And I got the old <laughs> phone, phone in the hotel room. Oh, come to my room, so I went to his room and he went, I'm leaving you out and you, you can't change my mind this time. And I was like, right, great. What's but I love life it. like. Oh, yeah, brilliant. I was going to say. Yeah, is it? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's probably yeah, bit backwards it got us there. all into trouble. But it, it worked both ways because we had such a good team spirit, but one because of that and two because of the, the journeys. So oh, yeah, everywhere. Bob Williamson, Everywhere's miles away. Isn't it? Bob Williamson would travel. We'd play like QPR and we'd set off at like half six on a Friday night. So you wouldn't be getting there to like half 10, 11. And then the hotels you stayed in at the time weren't the best. So you'd rock up at this like hotel. Adult. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd be playing like QPR or like whoever the next day, like big game. And you'd have like, we'd had no pre-match. It was like, we're sponsored by, uh, yeah, Ginster's, Ginster's pasties oh, yeah. at the time. <laughs> no, you didn't loads have of butty, loads of butties and pasties at the back of the bus <laughs> that we'd munch on the way. Is that your pre-match? That was the pre-match. The that, was like, that, was, that was the night, <laughs> that is night before the, the game. So, um, but that created what we had. That created. I mean, we, we we stayed up easily that season, and then we had a couple of real solid seasons where, like, eventually Tony Pulis came in. Yeah, he took us to a different level again, where he made us really competitive at, in, at that level. And then Ian Holloway came in, who who then off the back of being solid and and strong and having a good foundation under Tony Pulis, Ian Holloway came in and we started playing good football. And he signed some really good players like Sylvan Ebex Blake and Barry Hales, and um, the quality of player that started to come in. All of a sudden, we were we were a really strong championship championship outfit. Like I was trying to work out, it was, it was about six and a half years from scoring in the Premier League to then dropping into non-league. Yeah, which is quick. Yeah, yeah. And that's just you normally hit a few more branches, don't you? Of course you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you start if you start high enough, if that should have been the <laughs> that should have been the end of me, should it? <laughs> but uh, because I hadn't played. I yeah, think, I think well, it injury, sounds like a lot of injuries, I not think, playing. I think the, I think we're going a couple of years without playing. Um, I think that was the that was the main sticking point, and I knew, I made the decision then that if I play enough games, I'll play me, I'll play me way back up again. That's that was my mentality, really. Yeah, and I just thought I'm not like I didn't have the ego. I've never really had the ego of a big hitter. I wasn't bothered about that. I just wanted to start playing football and enjoying it. Um, and I spoke Why to, you go to Chester. Then? Well, I spoke to Mick Wadsworth. <laughs> Mick, Mick Wadsworth was at Chester, and he was a real good guy, and. Um, he said, "Come in here, play some games." He went. He went. We haven't got much money, but it's on your doorstep. Get back enjoying it. And I was like, "Yeah, great." Um, so that's what I did. I went to Chester, and uh, the football side went really well. It was just everything else that was going on was a shambles. Well, yeah. Well, they but, they were falling apart, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. So um, you actually didn't play for him, by the way. I know. Yeah. <laughs> if you look, if you look on the records, it's seventeen not there. goals gone. Hello. Which is- I know. Yeah, but, really, isn't it? Even from from you had a good season with them, didn't yeah. You? So the the fans wanted the chairman out at the time, and a couple, the sticking point was a couple of the lads that played for us were the chairman's were the chairman's lads. So we'd be playing, and like the fans would start singing songs against the chairman, and like the chairman's lad who was playing just sit down in the middle of the pitch. <laughs> chairman's lad is in his son. Yeah, his son. He's playing. So the fans are <laughs> sit down. The fans are like slagging the chairman, singing whatever, and they just sit down. 
and we'd be like, come on. He'd be like, no, I'm not playing. No way. Yeah. That's so like, and then I, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was like, it was, it was, it was mad. That's like, it was mad. Was his dad loaded? Cause that's yeah. like rich kids mentality that and it just yeah, sit down. Yeah, you could understand it. You know what I mean? It was yeah. quite, it was getting, it wasn't like, it wasn't nice. Um, yeah, you just what you some men. Like, you <laughs> yeah. can't not just like yeah. down. we did. Just stop. That was the end of it. Uh, and then we were, we're like we were. I think we were beating like we were beating somebody two 0 The fans were on the pitch to protest. It was game abandoned. And you're oh, thinking, yeah. what when you was winning? We were winning, yeah. And like <laughs> that's just the fans for you, that for honestly. The, for, the, for their fans, it was like the bigger picture was we want to make a statement. Sound. Winning two 0 I've scored two. Yeah, I'm just, I'm next just week, about, like, just about to you say you scored nineteen. Yeah, probably. I'm just about to say I have so like not a similar situation, but I I scored one nil, and then a, a parachutist dropped on the pitch. Where is this? And at? The game was abandoned. Where at? Uh, you can Google it. It's on it's on YouTube. I don't know if he, I don't know how he yeah. misguided and landed on the pitch. <laughs> I had a waterlogged so, one. Um, you, you're fuming. Less than, you're I scored fuming against Leicester. Do you know who beat him up? <laughs> <laughs> He's wrapped in his parachute. You're fuming, you're fuming, aren't you? You're fuming. That, that's what I'm going to say. So, yeah. so you were 2-0 up. That got abandoned. Yeah. But it become like, a, it become like these sorts of things were that regular. You all of a sudden, like, lads stopped being paid and all that. And then you was thinking, it was just one, one drama after the next. Yeah. And like, we... Come payday, you were queuing up outside the secretary's. Uh, there was some the stairway to the secretary's office, and you were queuing up for your wages that you got cash, and your wages said different to your pay slip, and you'd go up the stairs. And you didn't, you didn't know if you were going to get four weeks' money, or a week's, or none. Like I was doing all right, and I was captain, so I'd go up and they'd go like, "Nick, here's your wages," kind of thing, and I'd go. Thanks, and it was like no questions asked about the pace. It was like thank God for that. Yeah, but a couple of lads would go up and come back and go, oh no, like if they've been injured or young lads, I, I, I haven't got anything. Oh, it's horrible. It's, yeah, it's shocking. It got, it got yeah, it got. In the end, in the end, I think the, like the PFA got involved, and and I remember meeting the PFA on behalf of all the lads at the time, and and uh, the, and the players got paid out of the benevolent fund with the PFA. The PFA were amazing. Like, yeah, um, they got involved, and. Um, in, and did I think the PFA up, got involved when you was when it was non-league? Yeah, they did that. They did then. Yeah, it was good. But I remember, like, I remember, like, I think Portsmouth were in the similar boat at the time. And I remember, like, um, I remember some of the Portsmouth lads coming on Sky Sports News saying it was a disgrace they hadn't been paid and X, Y, and Z. And I was thinking, well, it's a little bit different when you've like twenty grand a week haven't been paid. And yeah. Some of our lads literally were saying to me, Two ton. Nick, I can't get in. I can't get into work. I can't put petrol in my car." So I'd be on the phone to the PFA going, these lads can't put petrol in the car, literally. And um, But they were they were really good. I met, I met a couple of them from the PFA who... Um, met the PFA who didn't sort Portsmouth wages out, did they? I think they did. <laughs> I, I, think they, I think they were involved in that yeah. as well. But um, it's difficult, isn't it? When lads aren't being paid and they can't they can't get in. Um, it was just a difficult situation. But eventually I moved, I moved on. I think I was old. You went, yeah. But they, bought, they bought another manager. They bought Mar- Morel Mason or May- I think his name was. No, I don't know. They bought him in from Chester, and by this time, I I'd, I'd said, "Look, I'm I'm going to be moving, like I'm going to sort that out." And uh, the chairman had said, "Yeah, you go and sort yourself out." And I got a call off one of the lads, and he says, uh, "They've got a new manager in. Some money's floating around. Like he's going to they're going to pay us. Come down to training." So I was like, "Ah," oh. I said, "You get mine, or uh, or I'll just get it on like next week or whenever for whatever reason I couldn't make the day they were saying." So they all got some. They all got some wages, like two weeks cash. I think it was wages, but I hadn't gone. So I was like, "It's all right. This new manager's come in. Like he's going to sort me out." The lads are telling me he's all right. So rang this new manager, told him the situation. This Morel, and he went, "Yeah, yeah, I've got like your wages are here. Come down on Tuesday for training. And, like we'll sort you out." So um, Tuesday comes. I'm on the way. Phone call from the club secretary no one's in tonight Nick no one's here like manager's not here so no point you're coming down all right then what about the wages next week call again manager's not here next week phone the manager oh I'm down south at the minute um, uh, all the wages are in my business account we've lock, lock, locked, it, locked it away I'll be there but I won't yeah, I won't have your yeah. wages <laughs> and the weeks just went by and went yeah. by and he robbed me he robbed it what, never, yeah. never what, giving me the, what do you reckon it was I don't know. He's 
robbed it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, yeah. it, 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 he robbed his money. He kept it, yeah. Yeah. He kept it. So I never got the... It was a, it was a couple of weeks and I moved, when I moved, I went to battle. I could have gone to a couple of clubs. I could have gone down south. Battle trained in Manchester. Do you miss, do you miss that 40 quid that it took? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I just said to Ballow at the time, I said, look, this is the amount I'm owed in wages. I think it's like six weeks. I said, I'm going to need some sort of signing on, which to give me. And then I ended up I ended up going to Barrow, um, which, which nice Barrow, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed, <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the trip up there on a Saturday. But they trained in Manchester, so again, yeah. it's local. Yeah, they do. So I could have gone to like I think it was like Wimbledon at the time. We're having a bit of a push. Stevenage, we're having a bit of a push. They wanted me to go down south, but Wimbledon uh, in, they were still in, in the, the National League. I think then. they were in the National League. Yeah, they were just yeah, about so. to go up. Um, Stevenage the same, I think, or they were maybe in the league above Crawley. Were down there at the yeah. time. I think they were interested, but. I didn't want to move down south, so I went to Barrow and um, had a couple of seasons there. I must have played against you then, then. Yeah, probably. Must have done. Where were you then? Fleetwood. We won the league because that that year we got beat off Wimbledon in the semi-finals, yeah. and then the year the year after we won. I think I think Fleetwood the National won the league. league. Would have been nil nil that game. <laughs> <laughs> you took top of it then. <laughs> like, I yeah, Fleet, imagine. <laughs> I think Fleetwood had already gone up. Had they? I think they'd already gone up, yeah. Might have, might have done. But, might have um, done. And then uh, you ended up at Stockport. Yeah. Wait, I didn't know this. Deep Mahaman. Deep Mahaman. Yeah. yeah, so the first season, Stockport were in the National League. That's yeah. when I went there. And again, I'd, I'd, had, I'd had a knee injury at Barrow, which was funny. So they had a, they had a physio at Barrow and his job is... Job title before being a physio at Barrow was pizza delivery man. <laughs> and, no, it was. And now he was physio. So my knee was swelling and he was saying to me, you need put some to, cheese on it. You need, no. <laughs> <laughs> some pepperoni. Yeah. Put a topping on that. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, you need to retire. And I was like, retire? retire. And he was like, well, if you keep swelling, I don't really know what you've done. You need to retire. <laughs> and I was thinking... Not a chance like do I need yeah. to retire. Then had the manager going. You don't need a piece of that, do you? <laughs> yeah. Slice of it. So he'd go, um, so the manager was going, just give us an hour. And I was going, have you seen the size of my knee? And he'd go, well, give us an hour. And at the time, I was desperate to play. So I'd be like, go on then. So I'd play an hour. And my knee would be like this big. And then the, uh, this, the physio, was a lovely fella. He was, he was a great guy. I loved him to bits. But he was going, Nick, you're going to have to retire. And I was going, not a chance. So at the end of paid. Just on that, well, he didn't work for Domino's today because if you if, if it's over an hour, you don't have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it works? If it's over an hour, you don't have to pay. Uh, so, um, <laughs> just repeating his shit joke again, just seeing what um, I liked it. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I paid the PFA for a scan and they said, you'd, you've just done your cartilage and your knee like four weeks, that just cartilage clean. trim. So was, uh, the op was booked. The night before the op, I had the hospital on the phone saying, uh, uh, you're in tomorrow, but no one's paid for your operation. So I was going, well, what, the club have paid for it. So I was on the phone to the chairman at, at Barrow. And uh, yeah, I'll get back to you, I'll get back to you. This was like six o'clock and I'd be in an operation the next day. So the, the chairman phones me and, and says, uh, we can't afford to pay for the operation. We can't go private. We've got to pay out. We're like, we've just got to pay. You're going to have to go on the NHS. I was like, well, how long's the waiting list on the NHS? They were like six months. I was like, I'm waiting six months. So um, I was into the savings. Like I was on the phone to one or two people. Look, I've got this operation tomorrow. I need to pay them like six and a half grand or something. So no, I had to pay it, it myself. So I paid it myself. And again, the, I was onto the PFA were brilliant. They sorted me out in terms of- um, Did you get it back? Got it back, yeah, through the PFA. Um, Can't go NHS when you're- six, that, 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 six and a half grand yeah. as well. Just and wait that. that time. Yeah. So, um, should I give Aaron Burns a call? <laughs> Insurance. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I got it back to the PFA. Yeah. And then I was thinking, well, I ain't going back to the physio for rehab and all that. I just, so I went into Everton and did a bit of rehab there. I went down to St. George's and did some rehab, oh. rehab there. And I got to the end of the season, the manager phoned me up and went, listen, Nick, um, I think it's best that, you know, we we'll probably won't be offering you anything. <laughs> I was like, fucking oh, right, you won't be offering yeah. me anything. You think I'm coming back? So, um, so I left Barrow. And then I was out without a club again. So I went training at Alty. And, um, what a club. Yeah, played against Burnley. Some of the Burnley lads were like, were like what, are you do, what are you doing playing? Like, well, adult like, lads I don't like, fucking start. I played, against, <laughs> I played against in the league like two years before. So, um, but from playing at, from playing for Alty. Um, was, it, was, it, was it not nice just to be enjoying it again? And, yeah, and that was fine. Like, I wasn't like, 
I say this to some lads now when they talk about like my head's gone and all that. I'm like, you've you've got to deal with stuff yeah. in your life. You've got yeah. to deal with the with the with the cards that you're dealt. You know it's what I mean? That resilience that, that yeah. we talk about all the time. Did yeah. lads not have it much? I was now. just get I was just getting on with it really, and I was yeah. I was enjoying being at home, and uh, I, I had a decent I had a decent life, and I was still earning to, to like the average guy. I was yeah. still earning all, all right money, and I was playing football. So and I, and I was still young enough, and I still had that belief in myself that just keep playing and you'll get back. And I, I scored a few goals for Barrow, and we won the trophy as well. So there was there was some good times in terms of the season I had at Barrow of the eighteen months. Was that at Wembley? Yeah, yeah. We, I didn't play. I'd, I'd been cup tied because I played for Chester. Um, so you missed out on another Wembley. Missed out another Wembley. How many finals have you missed? Yeah, yeah. I know. So uh, so as part of it, I give my, I think I give my my medal to uh, some of the sports science guy or another another the physio guys who not the dominant no, no, no it was the one it was the one before him, um, but that was um, so it wasn't it was there were some good times as well and it was like I say I was enjoying it and there were some great lads at Barrow and great lads and when I went when I went into Stockport so I think Didier Man had got wind of I was available um, and he was trying to form like a new side, if you like, at Stockport. And I went in under under Didier Mann and he immediately made me captain. It was difficult because um, Stockport is a big club. It's not, an, it's not a National League club. And for the first time, they found themselves in the National League. And yeah. there was a frustration amongst the fan base and amongst the club straight before I even, even walked through the door. There was a frustration that they were even at that level. Um, and I think they expected to just go and walk the league straight away, but there was there was financial restraints again with with yeah. that club and what was going on at the time that that was never going to be the case. And they had some good young players, and Sean McCombell had come from Aki for quite good money. So there was yeah. Tom Elliott was there at the time and myself. Um, so we had we had an half decent side. It just needed a little bit of time just to bed in a little bit of patience. It's but such a hard lead to get out of. Yeah, well, it's the worst, yeah. isn't it? Such yeah. a hard lead. Well, Stockport ended, in, ended up in that league and below for they went down. how many years? Yeah. 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 So, But that was their first season at it. So I think even the fan base was a little bit frustrated and wanted to get bounced straight back in. and, and um, Never won there. Maybe Stockport. Never won. Never won. Yeah, it's a t- it's a tough place to go. Yeah. But um, I, I loved it. I love, I love being at Stockport. I love the, cl- I love the club. Um, it was challenging because, because as I say, they yeah. wanted to get straight back up. I think we were about tenth, ninth or tenth. And how how did how did you find the manager then? I loved him. Was he good? Dead chilled. I've got this picture uh, of him like doing team talks with a sig because someone said yeah, he used to smoke it everybody. all the time. Yeah, yeah. But never. He wasn't. Um, he wasn't. He was professional. Like he wasn't like that in around the in around the changes. But in, in his office, I go up to his office like of a morning if any of the lads had any issues or whatever, and he he he'd love. Like, it's like Siggy Smoke or like, he was just, he was dead chill, dead, real good guy. I remember we had a couple of nights out as lads and I was going to him, come on, you've got to come and all that because he was the type of fella you wanted to come. Um, and he, but his talent was ridiculous as well, like on the training. He used to join in. Pitch. Yeah, he was like. Was, I remember scoring, I went to, it was a last ever England versus Germany game, last ever England game at Wembley. The, the, the yeah. old Wembley, yeah. and I, I went to watch it, and I went in the toilet and missed his goal. I think he scored it. Was yeah, one nil. Yeah, missed his goal, but he, he looked like he looked like uh, you know lining the line the ball up at the end of training and have a, like a, have a shot at goal and everyone yeah. have a have a go. He loved that, and it had come to his turn, and he just <laughs> spank it into the top corner all the time, and uh, he was ability wise, he was frightening. But as a guy as well, he was a real nice guy, yeah. um, and he got loads of stick from when from his time when he was at Stockport, but. Um, he had Jim Gannon was circling at the time. I think the fans wanted Jim Gannon to go yeah. back, and he was circling. And he's been back and he's been yeah. back and forth in that. <laughs> yeah. He didn't. Ha- did, he didn't have a chance to do well, really. No. But I think, given a bit of time and um, his football and philosophy, some of the managers and the players he's worked under, I think. Yeah, he'd, I, bet, I think yeah. he'd have been a really good. I think he'd have been a really good manager. Um, I think that probably just. He'd probably been a better manager higher up. Yeah, possibly in the league. And but I think that experience put him off. I think he thought. Yeah, because he's never really done much. I'm a bear, like yeah. Stockport yeah. fans just caning yeah. him for ninety minutes on yeah. Saturday. So, so out of out of your playing career, like who would you say? Like I, I, I always ask question, like who's the best player that you've you've played against or with? Like yeah, the obvious really ones stands are the, out. The Everton players aren't they? So Rooney was like Rooney was a league a league above in terms of his ability and and. Not only that, but his attitude, he was aggressive and he wanted to do well and he was a winner. And so you would have to say anyone who's, who's been on the same pitch as Rooney would have to say say Rooney in terms of the best they've played with. Um, 
but I've, I've been really lucky to play with some real top top players um, playing against again I remember playing against the Invincibles at Highbury and it was like it was first game of the season and you're playing like playing like Sol Campbell and Keon with the two centre halves. <laughs> I was like 19. 19. Yeah. Was, like, so, so that was Armory and all them. Like all them, them yeah. Wow, all what them. a team that was. Yeah. So uh, it was, yeah, it was Jens Lehmann's debut because Everton had a few injuries at the time. It was the end of pre-season. I'd done quite well. I said spoke before about doing well in pre-season. I'd, I'd, I'd had a bit of a push and um I think like Joe Max Moore and, and Big Dunk and Kevin Campbell, they'd either been injured or suspended or whatever it was. <clears throat> so um, I, I remember Moyes naming the team. I think we'd gone down to London. I think we trained like Hyde Park or just walking through set pieces at Hyde Park and he brought us all in and he said, look, first game of the season is the team. If you do well, you'll keep the shirt. Well, I was thinking, I want to do well. You know what I mean? I want to keep my shirt. That was like, it was great for me because I had nothing to lose. And... Um, I remember the first five minutes I went out and a cross come in, it was right in front of goal. And I like just di directed it first time. I thought I'd scored. And Jens Lehmann's going one way and I put it the other. And then his, his big German leg come out and just kicked it over oh, the no. bar. He saved it. And I was like, it was a great save, but from five, six Any, yards, I should have scored. Anyone else? Yeah. I should have scored. Yeah, I should have scored, but it was a great save. You feel like you should have scored. Yeah, I should have scored. It was a great picture. I got a picture like, from behind, all the Arsenal lads are looking at their chance, so you can see all the names on the shirts. It's like yeah. over Mars and Vieira and all them. And then there's me just about to score. What the picture doesn't show is that you saved it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, great memories though. Yeah. So playing against that that team, yeah, for me, like was brilliant. Chelsea came on at Chelsea to play against like your John Terry's and all that, and it was only like ten minutes here and five minutes there, but you were on the pitch. Yeah, no, like yeah. Newcastle Shearer was on the pitch when I came yeah. out of Newcastle last. I asked him for his shirt at the end of the game and um, things like that. So I came... Get it? Uh, he'd give it the kit man. Did <laughs> yeah. So he went to me, oh, I'll give it the kit man. And then to be fair to him, he got his first half shirt and he found Steve Watson, who, who was mates with Steve Watson. He said, give that I, I to I thought him. you said he got mixed up with Steve Watson. He gave it to him instead. Yeah. No, he said, give that to the, 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 the lad who come on or whatever he said. So, um, so that was... I, I, I tried to only get like real top quality... Um, player shirts. I came on at United. I came on at Goodison against United the, when they won the league at Goodison, and I'd like they won the league. I remember like gigs and skulls doing like little keep you up headers, and I was in between like like trying to get the ball, and they were keeping it up over my head. <laughs> but it was great to come on against that team when they just won the league. That was amazing as well. So some brilliant memories of players and teams I've managed to play against. Jolie and Lescott, and I played against Jolie and Lescott. He's at Wolves. All right, he yeah. was probably, I, I would say he was the best centre half I actually played against for a, 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 Just a long like, enough period of time. Really, didn't he? Yeah, well, he, he went to Man City player. after that, didn't he? Yeah, he went to Everton then to Man City. Right. Oh yeah, so yeah, he was yeah. at Wolves at the time. Yeah. But he at that level, the yeah. level that I really played at. Because as I say, when when you're coming on against these teams for 10, 15 minutes, but I think actually going up against someone for ninety minutes, he was probably the best. What yeah. at what point did you think? Yeah. Coaching was was for you after this. Uh, <clears throat> I think because of I, I knew with the injury I'd had and with the way I'd fallen through the league quite quickly, I thought I'm gonna have to work after football. I'm gonna have to get into something. I knew that straight away, and and I, and I, I thought coaching would be for me. I love football, love the game, um, and then the more I stayed in the game, I went back to Plymouth after I'd been at Stockport. I went back to Plymouth, and all of a sudden, I just like. People just navigated towards me. Younger pros navigated towards me. People were asking me questions. People were asking my advice. People were listening to my thoughts on, on the game or or on and off the pitch. Really, I just sort of took on that role quite naturally. Um, well, I suppose your last couple of clubs you've been captain as well, aren't you? Yeah, so that kind of. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. So I, I just sort of like morphed into it a little bit in terms of them leadership qualities, and then. I just wanted to, once I knew I was leaving Plymouth, I went back to Plymouth and I got I had two and a half years, I was like 30. And I knew once I'd, that contract had finished, I wanted to get back to the North West and wherever I played then, I played. Um, so I started doing a bit of coaching when I was at Plymouth the second time around with the with some, just helped out with the under 16s. I quite enjoyed it. Um, and then when I left Plymouth, I went to Tamworth back in the National League. And that was a tough, that was a tough couple of months. Um, 
And I started to think like, I think I could do a better job than what's being done coaching wise and yeah. management wise. And I thought if you're thinking that as a player, um, either go and do something about it and become a coach or, or respect what's going on. Uh, so, so that's what I did. I phoned up some of the guys at Everton who were in the academy and they said, great, come in if you're back in the area, come in and come and help out. And So where where, and did, where did you meet Jim Bentley? So I met Jim on the A-licence initially. I went into right, Morecambe okay. during one of the times I was out of contract. I went into Morecambe and did a, did a couple of weeks pre-season. Some boy, Jim, innit? Oh, I got on with him like house on fire straight yeah. away. Like, yeah. So I, I knew him from doing a couple of weeks at Morecambe and he was a player still then, um, but he was exactly the same. And then we were on the A license together. So we had a, the A license then was like two weeks at St. George's. So we just had like an amazing two weeks. Thank you. 30 <laughs> it yeah. was like, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I got on, I got on really well with Jim during that time. So we sort of half stayed in touch since then. And then he, when he was, when I was at Wigan, he was at Morecambe as manager and he loaned a couple of players from us. Yeah. Um, so we always just developed that relationship from then really. And then, so what's, what are you doing now then? So, after where I went into the coaching and was quite was quite successful in sort of the younger age groups, uh, that took me took me a while to build up what I what I thought me going into coaching. I didn't want to be I didn't want to be stood in front of a group of first team players not knowing what I was doing. Yeah, and shit myself. I was like, I want to be able to earn my stripes and know what I was doing. So I worked with the babies at Everton, the foundation phase. Went to Blackburn and worked with the youth phase and 15, 16 year olds there. And then, and then onto Wigan and did the youth team at Wigan, um, and progressed to the twenty one. So progressed through quite well. Yeah, did well at Wigan, though, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we had some yeah, good players. Good players, didn't they? We had some real good players. And then, um, can you say who's? Can can you name a name who's who's the best one that you've worked with? I've worked with a couple of good ones. Joe Gallard's outstanding. Yeah. Um, he obviously went off to Leeds, and he hasn't he hasn't quite broken through yet. But I'd be amazed if, still he, if he did. Yeah, yeah, he's got. Yeah, he was. He he had that the X factor if you like when you looked at. Him I thought before. it was a, I thought it was a bit Rooney esque. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, when, when he was a Wigan. Yeah, because yeah, he's quite he's quite stocky and thick set, but he's got yeah. lightning feet, and he can score and he can assist. And um, I, he he's the one that everyone when I was at Wigan was really excited about. And and he's got his potentials massive if he can fulfil it. Um, but when people say he's a bit like Rooney. It almost put it almost can put pressure on him, and right. when you get to uh, he was fourteen when I got there, um, and just to see that fourteen year old kid come through and then be able to play in the Premier League, yeah. talk about like rewards as your coach. It was a, it's an amazing thing. That's something for you, something but, for you to be proud of. As yeah, well. Callum Callum Lang's doing well at Wigan at the yeah, minute. He player, he's yeah. a good player. Um, Tello Asgard's at Wigan doing well. Quite a few have broken like through it, at Wigan yeah. now, and then we had you had my mate as well, didn't you? When one. you shouldn't have done who Cole Clough. Cole Clough, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I was 21's coach, we um cook Paul Cook down again. Cookie had just like bin people off if the if the and behave themselves and Ryan didn't behave himself quite Ever. a lot. <laughs> 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 so um so often I get a call from Liam Richardson or Cookie to say, Ryan Cole Clough will be with you today and then he'd turn up and his hand would be all bandaged or whatever. And I'd say, Come on, Ryan, what are you enough to like and he'd train with us for a week or no, so. He, lo he loved that you was actually yeah. salvaging him. He's like, No, I shouldn't be there, but they were all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I tried to do is anyone who got sent down, none of them wanted to be there. So I'd have like uh, Max Power was one who come down once. Max was a big player for Wigan. He'd been training with the kids and I was like, Max, go on, grab a cup of tea, what's going on? And I'd just try and talk to them on a level because yeah. none of them wanted to be training with the twenty ones. Um, but I, and then I'd get into them like, look, try and set these a good example because I was working with a group of players that wanted to get to where they were. Yeah. So I got them on board straight away. I tried to, um, and I and I was never gonna. I just said, just just do it right. At least I can report back that he's gone about it the right way. And they were all Ryan was good as gold. Max, I like Bruce, come down. There's yeah. a lot, a lot, some of the lads. Inevitably, nearly all of them had a, had a day or two with me at one point or another. Um, <laughs> But they all trained. They all trained really well. It was um, it was good. It was good for the kids as well because yeah. they actually got to see what. Yeah, even though it was a punishment for them, like. it was yeah. good for the younger ones. Yeah, and there's some ability. Like Ryan's got tons of ability. Isn't he? Jolt of a player. What's the uh, what does the future hold then? More coaching. Hold? More coaching. Um, I mean, do you want to become a manager? Do you want to? Uh, or do you want to actually was managing when? Yeah, Jim had his up. Yeah, he was. Well, yeah, he took over. Yeah, so so at file when Jim first phoned me at file. He was like, come and be assistant. We're going to go into administration. Come and be assistant. And then he said, but 
I've got to go off and have a have a heart bypass. He went, so for three months, you'll be the manager. And I was thinking, well, good, like, good experience. That'd be for me. And then I'd have to work with like senior pros as well, yeah. who who I hadn't I hadn't done that before. So, uh, and and then I he wanted had, to he say, had the op, but come back within a week. Yeah, he? he's like he come back fairly quick. Machine. Yeah, he had this app coming, shouting about his insurance paying out. Oh, he <laughs> he me after a week. Going, you want to see my bank balance, lads? <laughs> <laughs> Class uh, guy. Honestly, he, he phoned me the night of the night of his op. Um, we had a game. I know it's like Alfred. I think it was. I was and, probably uh, on bench or... <laughs> and, uh, he hadn't scored anyway. And, uh, <laughs> and he, he... You can't he score in that team because Nick Horton just fucking <laughs> no, shoots yeah. from fucking 40 yards. <laughs> but he phoned me up and he went, have we got on and all that? And he'd only had the op like two hours previous. Um, oh, really? Yeah. It was, and we won? It was mad. I think we drew. I think we drew in the last uh, minute. But um, that was good for me, you know, like working with like... like not just who's here, but Jordan, Dave Perkins, Chris Neal, Pondy, Pondy was there at the ah, time. Lads who had a good group. Archie, Lads who Philly, yeah. Conlon, good side. Ozzy, yeah. it was a good side. In, Brains of Britain, yeah. Osman, yeah. Uh, Whitmore, Skipper. Yeah. I was thinking the team they've gone up with is yeah. what you've put together. I think, na- I think na- yeah, I think nine of the starting team that got promoted were were playing when we were there. So, Me and Samuel could have hit a fucking barn door. It would have been yeah. right. <laughs> the chairman got rid of him. So, like, we had, like, we were top of the league nearly the whole season, weren't we? Yeah. I think we were second in the league. And um, the chairman was on the phone to, to the manager, the gaffer, like, to Jim, and he said, uh, we can't score. Like, Jordan's not scored. Um, and Samuel's not scored. Uh, Jordan's going back to Alty, and Samuel's going to Chorley. And we were like... <laughs> he's sent us both they're back. Like, <laughs> they're, our two, they're our two centre-forwards, like. And to be fair... Both you and uh, and Samuel were playing really well, weren't you? It was we just doing the, all right in the end, yeah. And Orty was scoring for fun. Yeah. So it weren't like the team weren't scoring. I think we were the top scorers in the league by a mile. We were like 72% possession. We had this like way of playing was that doing, was like... We were doing all right, that's yeah, it. Yeah, we were doing great. I look yeah. back at my time and I think, I just don't know why, I don't know why it didn't click because I loved all the lads. Yeah. I loved the, the coaching staff and tails and didn't really like <laughs> physio. <laughs> physio used to cane me. Why? I used to say, like, can I get a rub? He's like, no, nah, you're not going to play anyway. So just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gee, he was actually yeah. sound. Yeah, he just used to get yeah. in my head. He'd be like, leave it because I'll give Orton a rub. He'll defo start. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> just what? Yeah. He was winding me up. But it's I always like, it's like, always like you were trying too hard when you were there. Yeah. And, and we, we had a way of playing that was a little bit more patient, I yeah. reckon. The problem might, might not have suited you. And I was just, and we were like, stop like, making excuses. <laughs> <laughs> just say all the shit, Chad. No, I wasn't. Played Exeter in the cup, you're And I was class. Yeah, you're outstanding. You score? Yeah. So and one disallowed, was it? Or um, uh, penalty that should have had, or one disallowed? Yeah, we should have, should have had a penalty as well. Should have beaten, we lost. Covid, though, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. It's not bad, though. One game, one COVID game killed it. COVID, <laughs> COVID, we'd gone up, the COVID, it was the Covid year, and we'd have gone up that year. Got so many excuses. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't sound Just like Covid, out, yeah. bans. Yeah. <laughs> the chairman got... In cha- Orton. So the chairman gets rid of him and Samo, and, me and Jim's not happy like him. I'm going like, oh, I've got a centre forward. And he says, it's all right. The chairman says, play like Man City with two false tens. <laughs> two false nines, yeah. Two number tens as false nines. Yeah. And we were like, <laughs> yeah, and we were like, might not be going, that might not go the way we want it to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what the COVID year killed him. So, I, oh, I was there. Rochdale, actually. Yeah, I went to Rochdale, yeah. So, um, Jim phone was out the blue, really. About this, uh, this time last year or a bit further on, I think the season started, 10 games in. And he said, um, I think I've got a chance of the Rochdale job. They want they've mentioned about you coming. Would you would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, hundred um, percent. And it was just wrong wrong club, wrong time at Rochdale. They had like they were, they were we were already bottom of the league. I think they had a point in the first ten games. So that basically said that I told you where the squad was at. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the lads were tied into to two year deals and and beyond. Um, so we were quite honest with board when we went in and Jim was quite honest and Jim said, look, we're going to need more than just the two of us to turn this round. I think Rochdale have been on a slippery slope for the last few seasons. Yeah. And um, we needed a, a whole culture change and quite a big change in a lot of the things that were going on. And we were told that was going to be the case and it never really materialised. And I think the best clubs are the ones that are stable behind the scenes and have got the, got the infrastructure right and got the right people in the right positions behind the scenes. And that was never really never really the case at Rochdale so we felt a little bit like we were hung out to dry really a little bit because they took us in 
we didn't change much. Um, we had one point from the first ten games. It wasn't it wasn't going to get that much better. We got it's hard. It's hard. It's difficult. It was difficult. We got the odd we got the odd player in on loan in January, and and there were some good people there who who, were, who tried the best to to help us to turn it around. But we didn't. We never really got the support. Certainly, like think about file people. People talk about the chairman negatively at file, but to be fair to him, he always he always manages to support the management and whoever he's got in place and the yeah. infrastructure they've Eighth got. Flight. Yeah, flight. The, the infrastructure they've got it's set up it's set up for the club to succeed. The infrastructure at, at Rochdale just it just isn't there. Yeah. Um, so it, it was it was difficult and um, a lot of the decisions we were told was going to be uh, the club are going to be fully supportive of us and, and what we were trying to do and. We never managed, or Jim never managed, to be able to get his own team um, team in place. And if he'd have been able to do that, his record shows the team he created at Morecambe stayed in the league for years. Yeah. The team he created at Fylde has been good enough to get promoted into the National League, nine out of the 11, with his players. So had he been able to have, have got his own team together, I think we'd have been a lot more successful than ultimately we were. But it was a wrong club, wrong time yeah. um, for us. And ultimately... We were we were left to pay the price, and the club moves forward, which is football. If you don't win enough games, you end up moving on. But at some point, you need you need some sort of support to be able to to be successful. And we never got that. So it's like anything you need backing, you need money, <coughs> the right players. Yeah, like ultimately, yeah. like you can't, can't even if you've not if you've not got the money. I think now if you've not got the money, I think you need you need to. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to be able to um, at least work hard to be able to make things better yeah. and get things as as to as good standard as possible. I think there's an acceptance from before we went in that this was going to be a really tough period for the football club and how well that's the way it's going to be. And, and we, we couldn't change that culture, if you like. We couldn't change that around just the two of us being in the building as much as Hume knows. Jim more than anyone. He's such a big character. Yeah. Um, but he used to do like five minutes of stand up before training. <laughs> it yeah. was like a just comedy. Just, yeah. Everyone yeah. was just creasing with laughter. Yeah. And like, say one of the lads, like the younger lads, would say like, "Oh, pull the bird on Saturday." Jim would go, "Right, circle of trust, young and get yourself in. <laughs> What's yeah. happened? Got on the X. Tell us everything." Yeah. And in, in the end, I'd be giving him a nudge, going, yeah. "Come on, we've been studying here fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah. Let's get training." Like well, that's brilliant. Not to yeah. get lads it together. Class. But he. Yeah. he, he his man management and the way he is around the place was brilliant, but even he couldn't, his character wasn't big enough to be able yeah. to turn it round on his on his own. No, so one, no one could have done that if he no. needed character. Oh, well, a lot of, exactly. And a lot of managers had turned the position down, but, oh, three or four, I think, had turned it down before Jim Jim went in and, and we went in together. And you, once you're in there, you can see why why people might yeah. be turning this down. And so was, are you hoping to to work with Jim and, and find something else in the future? Who you knows? I I love him. He's he's I think he's a good manager. But more more importantly, he's a good person. Um, so if we work together again, that would be fantastic. But also, I think I've had success when I was at Wigan in terms of being able to develop younger players, and I think that's a strength of mine to be able to work with, with younger players and develop them and, and guide them into the path of professional football. So if that's a route for me, then that would be great. But I love the game. I love coaching. Um, and I, I think I've got something to offer. So if I can um, stay in the game and be able to do that, then I'll be I'll be happy. And I think when I look at my football career, the, my, the most I enjoyed was the, was the journey from yeah. like 16 to like the journey through. Actually, when you got there, it was quite it becomes difficult if you yeah. like, not as enjoyable the pressure and everything else. And that's similar to me coaching. I, I'm 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 enjoying the journey. I'm enjoying wherever that mate takes me and all these experiences, whether it be Rochdale last season, which which was really difficult, or the filed side we had, or the success I've had at Wigan. Um, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed it, and I just want to be able to continue on doing that. And you're bored. You bored now? Yeah. Tell them you are. Oh, I'm bored. Yeah. My golf handicaps come. My golf handicaps <laughs> come down. Yeah. Can't do any more uh, chores at the out in the house. Well, just just obviously listen to your story then, and obviously all your experiences and 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 the level that you've played at is unbelievable. Like you should be should be so proud of of your career, and you've obviously got a lot of experience and and wealth and knowledge that you can pass on. So. It's been a pleasure l listening to you. Thanks very much for Class. Co coming in. Some of the biggest yeah. names we've had mentioned on yeah. here. I don't yeah. want to be name dropping for fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> but no, mate, I wish you all the best for the future. It's been an absolute yeah, pleasure to have you in. Nick Cheers. Cheers. Nice to see you again, pal. You Cheers, mate. pal.
Cheers. <laughs> yeah, class, mate. Cheers. Cheers.